Hey, today we're talking with Maria Killam all about paint undertones, how knowing them can help you in your interior design business. Oh, and also how to be really bossy with your clients. Hey there, welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. I'm your host, the Grand High Pooba of all things here at Wingnut Social, Darla Jethro Powell. And today we have a great show for you. Maria Killam is here, finally. My goodness, I've been waiting forever to get Maria on the show. If you're not familiar with Maria Killam of Maria Killam Inc., uh, if you're an interior designer, her color system Killam Color System has been invaluable for me when I was doing full-time interior design. And I think you're going to see the potential and uh, want to just grab it super quick for your interior design, your e-design business. She's going to walk us through how that works, how it can help your interior design business, plus some other uh, tricks and tips and advice for running your interior design business in a more assertive, confident way. Plus, she has a, a little bit of advice on there and how she grew her Instagram following a uh, hundred thousand followers plus uh, using a new Instagram tool that we've discussed here on the podcast. So make sure you listen through the whole way because you don't want to miss any of that. But before I get into my conversation with Maria, some housekeeping. This month's webinar is going to be with renowned interior design business coach Desi Creswell. The date and topic are to be announced and that's only just because I don't have it here because I'm recording this in early July. <laughs> so to find out more information by the time this show airs, just head on over to wingnutsocial.com. Check out Wingnut Academy and in the drop down will be all the information on Wingnut webinars. If you're not watching us on our YouTube channel, Run, Don't Walk. Get on over to Designed by Wingnut Social on YouTube. All of our past webinars live there and they're free and chock full of amazing information. You can see my interviews with the guests that we do here and some of the conversations led to a, lead to a more visual element there. So it's very helpful, especially Maria's. Today, you're gonna, there's some visual cues there that you might find uh, helpful on, on YouTube for that. So wingnutsocial.com to find out more about that, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate that. Okay, now you all know what time it is. It's time for Men in News, Men in News Sesh. Yeah. yeah. Hey there, Emily Lisi. Welcome back to the Mini News, and thank you so much for filling in for me while I was out of town. You did amazing. Oh, thank you. It was my, my pleasure. So what do you have for us today for Mini News? This one's exciting. Um, Instagram has announced that pretty much all feed video uploads are now just going to be straight up considered reels. Okay, so wait a minute. So all video on Instagram is going to be considered reels? How is that going to work? Yeah, pretty much all video on the feed specifically. So they did away with IGTV a few months ago now. So now they're, sounds like they're getting rid of Instagram, what they called recently Instagram video. They're getting rid of that for the most part as well. And when I say for the most part, they said any video that is less than 15 minutes in length is going to be considered reels now. So if it's longer than that, then it's still technically going to just be considered Instagram video. So it's kind of, it's kind of strange, but you can tell they're, they're really doing this just because they're really, really leaning into reels. <laughs> so they're leveraging anything on 15 minutes or under to the reels to, to put more content in there. Gosh, I don't know, scrolling up and seeing a 15 minute reel <laughs> or a 14 minute reel. Yeah. yeah, well, you, you know, they, they're really basing a lot of their decisions, it seems, off of what TikTok's doing. And you see TikTok, they're, they're leveraging more longer form video as well. So it's kind of just a, a copycat back and forth game with that. <laughs> well, if there was any uh, more of a reason to attend this month's webinar <laughs> about reels, I can't think of any. Because, you, you know, we've seen the metrics from our clients that the reels are what are, what's helping our clients to grow their accounts, their following. So, I mean, it, maybe it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, if if you've been on Instagram recently, you see a lot of people pushing back on just reels in general and Instagram trying to become more like TikTok. Even, you know, people like Kylie Jenner, she posted about it on her story saying, you know, don't don't be like TikTok and Instagram. Like they <laughs> they really want it to just go back to the photo driven app, but it, we've just gotten to a point in social media where video is king and there's nothing we can really do about it. Yeah, and, and they don't want to lose their market share, to be fair. They see how fast TikTok is growing, but I'm really personally kind of glad that celebrities with that kind of merit are are giving a little bit of pushback to Adam Masseri, right, on um, 
on changing so many things or becoming something. I, I think I said that uh, months ago on, a, on an episode that Instagram, we love Instagram because Instagram was different. Instagram had the beautiful feed and it still does. And the beautiful photos, you know, that was something different than your regular social media stuff. They're trying to become everybody else. You know, what, what is the end game there? But probably shareholders <laughs> and making money, just like, just like everything, right? Alrighty, cool. Anything else on this or that's it? Short and sweet. I guess just one more thing, just to not help, not to make people feel too discouraged, that you can do things like slideshows with your photos, with your beautiful design photos, create slideshow videos. You know, you don't have to record, you know, original videos for every single reel that you're posting. Um, and when you do that, it it's best if it's full screen length, but if it's just a square image, that works too. Like uh, Instagram is going to optimize around what you post. So um, don't feel like you need to be recording stuff every single day, putting out original stuff every single day. Look at what the content you do currently have and work with that and create videos with that content is kind of some encouragement I give people. All right. Great advice. Great encouragement, Emily. Thank you again. Thank you for filling in and we will see you next time. All righty. Thank you. Mini new sesh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So today's guest, Maria Killam. Let's get into it. But first, I have to tell you more about her. Maria Killam is a decorator, stylist, speaker, educator, and true color expert in interior and exterior e-design. She is the creator of the Killam Color System, a proven system for choosing color that anyone can learn. Her work has been featured in Apartment Therapy, HGTV, and House Beautiful, among other publications. Maria's brand is built on the solid foundation of timeless design, which resonates with countless loyal readers all over the world. Learn more at mariakillam.com. All right, let's get into it. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming Maria Killam to the show. Hey there, Maria Killam. How the hell are you? It's so nice to finally meet you. I'm so good. It's nice to meet you too. Thanks for having me. Of course, a no brainer. So you're huge in the interior design industry from a design perspective, a user standpoint, and also B2B for interior designers. And we were talking in the green room. I have used your color system, your color boards on projects when I was doing full-time design in Miami, and they were invaluable. So thank you so much for that. And we're going to start this conversation with that business, that business model, how you got into it. And then we have some uh, really, really helpful mindset tips and tricks that we were talking about in the green room as well to share with the audience. So make sure you stay tuned to the end for that. So Maria, tell me what is going on with you and uh, the whole color system deal. Let me see. About 20 years ago, maybe not so long ago, I've been doing, I've been doing this now for 25 years, but probably about 15 years ago, that's when I started my own business. But, and then, so a few years prior to that, I found myself, you know, working in a paint store and I started painting up my large color samples to help, you know, make the choosing of colors in people's homes a lot faster and a lot more efficient. Because when I first learned how to choose color, you know, I was, my very first business was called One Day Design, you know, and that was before staging was invented. And so, you know, I put an ad in the yellow pages and the ad said, we use what you have to create affordable, incredible interiors. And at the bottom, I wrote expert color consultation. Well, you know, I'd only ever done like a color theory course. That was it. And so, you know, I started getting all these calls and this, you know, one woman calls me and she says, you know, I'm looking at all these, you know, I'm trying to pick a color for my living room and I'm looking at all these beiges, you know, and I see that some have, you know, red undertones and some have green undertones. Can you help me with that? And I said, absolutely. And I had no idea what she was talking about. So I thought, oh, like I better figure this out. So I found a color course in San Francisco and I flew down and painted colors for five days. And that's when I learned that all colors fall into, you know, the way to describe color the most accurately, right? When your client says to you, like, what's the difference between this color and that color? You know, it's either light or dark, it's cool or warm, it's clean or dirty. And then that then fast forward, you know, I'm working in a, in a Benjamin Moore paint store. I start painting out my large color samples and it was from using these large color samples over and over again that I discovered that, huh, like beige always seemed to come back to, you know, pink beige, green beige, yellow beige. And then my, you know, the 
undertones expanded from there as I kept working in the field and then as trends changed, right? I mean, when I first started teaching my course to students, you know, I mean, I barely even talked about gray because gray wasn't trending yet. So fast forward then, you know, gone through the through a gray trend and now we're in the black and white trend, which we are now splitting hairs on whites. I mean, that's really what we do all day and all night in my e-design department where we help clients with their new builds and renovations, kitchens, bathrooms all around North America. We do some projects elsewhere in the world, but mostly North America. So yeah, I have four people that um, work with me on, in my, on my team. And um, yeah, it's basically it's just, it's just a, um, um, you know, you buy it online, the actual project or, or package that you want then you send in your information. And really, I mean, what we do is we promise timeless color for our clients for all their packages. And so that's really what we're doing. So not only then did I start talking about my system in 2008 when I started to write my blog, but then because at that point I'd, I'd been in thousands of homes in a four year period working out of the paint store where I was doing volumes of color consultations, you know, people were always cranky about the last person's idea of personality that they'd injected into the bathroom or the backsplash tile, the accents. And so then I started saying, you know what, like subway tile, that's, that's it. That's it, kids. Like, that's the way you get the most timeless space. I mean, you know, and I mean, I go on rants all the time on my social <laughs> media about this. Yeah, you do. As you know, but, you know, I mean, my advice is for the every person, for the every man, you know, for the person doing it themselves. They have no idea. And without any guidance at all, they end up at the tile store, you know, just flailing around, coming home with pedestrian 12 by 24, you know, blotchy tile, and then wondering why they, you know, they've spent all this money, right? And then it just falls flat, right? And so I... I, you know, I just, I just live for the world to have a more beautiful space and to not have to rip out their finishes every 10 years when the trends change. I love that about you is that you do give advice to, to keep your spaces timeless. So it's not as trendy or not trendy at all, if you, if you can help it. So you are getting more bang out of the buck. But let's go back to the, the color boards and the Killam color system, at least what I'm familiar with. If you're uninitiated in the audience, and you're not really familiar with what we're talking about. These are what, what are they, 12 by 12? Yes. So this is the system now on my color wheel. And um, well, let's see, I have I have, um, yeah, they're 12 by, 12 by 17. Oops. I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> if you're listening on the podcast, Maria, Maria is holding up a board here. You have to go to our YouTube channel and uh, check out the video for that. <laughs> That's basically the size of them. And they're made from really good quality poster boards. So it makes it easy to move them around. But the idea is, and they, they really are, um, you know, if you, if you, this is my, my, um, what I'm doing now is holding up my understanding undertones, um, system for specifying color. So these are the nine undertones basically that are the most useful, the ones that you're going to find over and over again, everywhere you go. And so you basically use this tool to identify the undertone in your space. Then you use the bigger samples to compare, to make sure, like, say if you have a carpet and the carpet is kind of, you know, it could be taupe. Eh, could be green gray but you're not sure well you'd pull out both of those samples and then you would compare you'd prop them up in the right place right they have to be you know vertical against the wall like that's where it would be when you were when you'd be painting right you'd have and then you create this white backdrop I just turn a couple boards around so that it creates this blank backdrop so you're not comparing to the color behind the color you're looking at right so the secret to choosing the right neutral and I mean you know, my system teaches people neutrals. It also teaches people how to choose colors. And I firmly believe that color is timeless. You know, if you like, I have a sunflower yellow sofa that I've had for 13 years. It's in my third makeover. I mean, I'm moving this fall. It'll be in my next living room. Like, there's just no reason to change it because it's my favorite color. It's not as heavily used sofa, given that it's in my living room, right? Where that's not the heavily used room. And so, I mean... I mean, my favorite story that I always talk about in my courses is when the Ritz in Paris did a $400 million renovation a few years ago, 
You know, they had the turquoise and red suite. Then they had the pink and gray suite. Then they had the, you know, indigo blue and white lobby. And I mean, the entire hotel is just color everywhere, you know. And then I asked my students, well, when does the Ritz Hotel need to renovate? Well, you know, not until it's threadbare, right? Because it's it's the trendy neutral hotels that, you know, you can walk into most hotels anywhere in North America and, you, you know, you hit a gray hotel and you know, well, this hotel was probably renovated in the last 10 years. If you hit a brown hotel, you're like, well, this hotel desperately needs an update because it's been at least 20 years since it's been done. So, you know, I mean, it's just, and it's just so debilitating, truly, all gray, all <laughs> brown. And now with the black and white trend, you know, people are overusing black in a really, really big and harsh way. And black immediately gets harsh, flat, and predictable if it's overused. And, you know, I've lately, it's been now five years, I would say. I would say five years that the black and white trend has been, you know, going strong. And I have now come to the conclusion that... This trend is ruining our neighborhoods. Like, it is just because you drive through a neighborhood and there are these stark white homes or all black homes beside, you know, like they're, and they just kind of stick out as being so wrong. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with a, you know, like a, like a white, like a, I would just do anything but white right now is basically my, I'm currently writing an update to my exterior masterclass where I'm going to be saying, look, kids, do anything but start white. You know, it's hard to market your interior design business without a solid marketing strategy. It's key. It's like going into business without a business plan. That's something you definitely don't want to do. And if you're not in a position right now to delegate out your digital marketing, just to a full service done for you kind of situation, then you really, really need to take a look at Wingnut Social's social media marketing strategy. So the strategy is incredibly robust with everything that you will need to know on how to market yourself in the digital realm on any given social media channel in order for your ideal clients to find you and to grow your business. And it's amazing, but don't just take my word for it. Here's Stacy Martin from The Fresh Maker. Before using Wingnut Social, I was lost and crying in a dark corner of the internet. I had no idea how to really run my social media in a way that attracted those dream clients I was looking for and really grew my social media following. So as a longtime listener of the Wingnut Social podcast, naturally I reached out to Darla Powell and her awesome team for help and help they did. It was an amazing experience. I received a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to increase engagement, how to increase likes, and ultimately how to capture those dream clients and those dream projects I was really looking for. And the whole process just exceeded my expectations. I could not recommend Wingnut Social enough. They're so fun to work with. They really know what they're doing. And I am so glad I turned to them for help with my social media marketing. Wingnut Social, we love you. Thank you, Stacy Martin. We love you too. If you need help with your strategy for your interior design business, your architect firm, or if you're a to-the-trade manufacturer and you just have no idea what you're doing, then head on over to wingnutsocial.com. Check out the reviews for our strategy. It's incredibly robust and amazing and will take your business from meh to amazing. <laughs> wingnutsocial.com. So I have a question about the Killam color system. Is it is it B to C and B to B? Are you selling to the the end consumer who's going to do it themselves in their home, or is it oh, more yes. for? Okay, okay, cool. That's awesome. What a, what a help, super helpful tool. Well, I mean, you know, it's funny because I was just on a team meeting with my uh, in in LA a couple weeks ago, and my CTO says, "Okay, so Maria, did you invent these neutrals? Like this whole system of neutrals?" I said, "Yeah." He's like, "Okay, so really." Really? You've invented the Ten Commandments of interior design. And why aren't we like shouting that from the rooftops? Why don't people know this, that you invented it? He said, I thought you just took something and made it better. He said, I didn't know you invented it. So I'm like, obviously, I don't say that enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because up until people discover my system, they still are walking around saying things like, well, um, yeah, I prefer, you know, warm grays over cool grays. 
<laughs> right? Because they don't understand that, oh, oh, I see. Okay, so you like violet grays and green grays over blue grays. Good. That's good to know. I mean, right? Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. It's so funny. My, my fiance and I were, were choosing paint colors for the house and I'm going over the samples that I have. And I said, well, this has a blue undertone. This is a little red. This is a little. And she's looking at me like my head is screwed on wrong. She's like, what the hell are you talking about? And I, I don't have anywhere the knowledge you do. I'm not saying, but I, from getting your boards and, and doing a little bit of learning there, I do understand that it is a thing. So how important is it for interior designers to really know about the undertones and, and how you know, how important it is when putting together a cohesive space, much less not trendy, right? Um, as far as saving time, saving money, can you speak to that? I've actually been thinking a lot about lately why I feel like the interior design community hasn't really jumped onto my system. Like, wow, like once they discover it, why aren't they going, good, give me, give it to me. Like, why is it that the celebrity designers out there are still kind of doing their thing? Like they're still just picking their, you know, they got their go-to white. But the thing is, is that, you know, a celebrity designer is really good at styling if they're, if they're featured in magazines, right? And there are so many mistakes that you can save and disguise color mistakes just by being a good stylist. You know, I show, I show a really good room that Nate Berkus did with like, you know, like gold, you know, really earthy tile in an en New York entry where the walls are stark white. Well, you know, without the, the, the coordinating, you know, uh, maple table in the same tones that matches the floor, the art that he's got on the wall that coordinates with it, you would look at that empty room and you would think this looks like primer, this paint color, right? But he has instinctively immediately brought in those warm tones to style up, to make it all work. So then nobody notices that, well, maybe this, you know, paint color could have been a little warmer, could have been a little better, could have been a complex cream, which is, um, you know, one of the palest of the beiges in my system, or it could have been a grayish, right? Like whichever works. So when people hire me, that's what they get. But anyway, I'm, I'm now off on this tangent. Wait, what was I? What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> about how how important it is for designers to understand the uh, the undertones and the underlying like science for the lack of a better word behind scaling and picking colors for clients yeah i think people really do believe still the myth that the paint color will change like that if you can that you can work as really really hard to get the right paint color to coordinate with everything in your space but then the light comes along and then it changes. And now you're like, well, I tried, but the light now changed the color. Well, you know, yes, of course, if you're the only time light doesn't change the color is if you're in a north is a completely north facing room where you never get any natural light shining into the room. But if you have a room, any other space, you know, if you actually have a taupe carpet and you paint your walls taupe, if the light comes in and changes that taupe, makes it look more yellow for a couple hours during the day or whatever, right? You're not gonna be upset about that because it looks most of the time like it's the right color for the room. And that is what I teach my students. And that is the, that is the only way that it's possible for me to do e-design that you know, we average over $50,000 a month in gross sales in e-design every month. I mean. If I had to ask people, what's your exposure? Like, how can I possibly predict what's gonna happen to the color if someone says, okay, Maria, like, you know, my, my living room is south, you know, my master bedroom is east, you know, like, no, <laughs> like it's, no. So, I mean, we pick the colors, you know, for, for my clients based on, you know, what's the undertone of the room? Like, how do you pull that room together? So there's so much, potential in the world of, of, um, you know, like right now, why do you, like you could go on to the pottery barn, for example, if they were using my system and you should be able to say, okay, I want a green beige and white duvet cover. And that's what pops up because that's, I mean, you can take my system colors and you can 
match them up to, to any and all of these items because they're the same everywhere you go over and over and over again. I love it. I, lo- I love the potential of the utility there, or I guess the not even potential because it exists for e-designers when you are so hands off and you really can't go and see the space. It just seems like a no brainer for that. And with e-design becoming so prevalent now, especially since uh, COVID and everybody's on digital, everybody's doing Zoom meetings and design meetings on digital. And some designers have just said, screw it. I'm tired of doing, you know, in-person one-on-one stuff. I'm just going to do any design. That's my business model. We have several Wingnut clients who are shifting into that business model as well. So I, I love that. That's just, that gives you a metric, a barometer, a, a, a stable like baseline to be able to choose colors from for e-design clients without it being like something crazy. That's right. And in three weeks, I'm going to be launching a course on how to do it. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. Well, this episode's going to air in two weeks from the day we're talking. So it seems like perfect timing. Okay, so let, let's talk about your e-design business a bit, because we were talking in the green room that you still are doing some one-on-one stuff, but mostly your business model is educational and e-design. What what does set your, your business uh, apart from other e-design businesses? Well, the fact that we're promising that we're going to give you the right color for everything, for your countertops, for your cabinets, for your floors, for your bathrooms, for your tile, like that. Where most, I mean, most e-designers are, you know, they're, they're, they're decorating, right? They're choosing furniture for their clients. Yeah. And so what we're doing is, you know, giving people a plan for their new build, for all the colors, right? And in fact, we did have a get me started package, which was like a decorating package that we had for a while. But then when the pandemic came and then with all the supply chain shortages, that the minute we put together, here's your rug, here's your pillows, like, you know, it's sold out, right? I mean, so we had to pull that package from the site. But to be clear, that package was the most time consuming all around as well because you had to find, you know, those pillows to go with the rug, to go with, you know, it's a, you know, and then it has to be, you know, I had to be super heavily involved in those packages as well because it has to be my look that people are buying, my aesthetic that they're buying. Um, but with, you know, with our kitchen packages and, you know, uh, all of our hard finish, just all those packages that we're doing, you know, I mean, because I'm specifying subway tile, you know, I'm not looking for like, we're, you know, we cut and paste that slide. We cut and paste, you know, like I just launched a, you know, people are always asking what hardwood floor picks, what are my LVP, what, what LVP is the most timeless, right? So I just launched that particular guidebook on my site today, as a matter of fact, because, you know, my, my new build renovation packages are expensive and I don't offer an actual, you know, here you can just buy like a hard finish package because what we found when we offered all the little smaller packages was that what people really did need is they still needed, like most people don't take out the floors in their entire house without redoing their kitchen. I mean, that's most of the time they're not doing that. So they still need to know like what's their cabinet color, what's their, so they would send in their, they would say, here's what we're doing. Here's the countertop. Here's this, here's that. And then I'd be like, well, that's wrong. (laughs) You know, it should be this, it should be that. So we ended up giving away all this free advice or just having to go back to people and say, look, like you really do need to buy this and this. And if you want the look, if you want to get the look you want in the end. So that's the reason why now when you go on my page, I'm only selling complete packages because we found that people are just happier when they get all the advice that pulls their room together. Because most people think about um, renovating the same way that they, that they decorate, right? They need a sofa. So they run out and get a sofa. Then they bring their sofa home that looks totally to look totally different on the showroom than it looks in their house. Cause now it's sitting next to their carpet that they existing carpet, their existing paint color. And now they're like, Oh, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It doesn't go now. Now I need a new rug. Cause now it doesn't go with my rug. Like it's just, you know, and so people think about renovating the same way, like, Oh, like I need a countertop, right. W- without creating the plan they need, as you know, being a designer is that you've got to have the entire plan laid out beforehand before you make one single purchase. I learned the hard way and maybe other interior de- decorators do it differently, but I always start with the rug. <laughs> that's the hardest thing to bring in. And so I always start with a super cool rug and, and pull from that. Yeah. Does your course offer a certification or something that an interior designer can use in their 
uh, marketing that they're certified X, Y, and Z in this process? How does that work? Um, the certification comes when you do my virtual, um, currently it's virtual still, my Specify Color with Confidence event, which is a two-day event. And after you do those two days, you're a true color expert. Um, because yes, I'll be selling my e-design course, but you still, you still need the first two days in order to really understand how it works and how to, how to actually use the system effectively and accurately so that you get the right color so that you don't sit there and just go, well, it's the light (laughs) (laughs) because it's not the light. It's 5% the light, maybe even 1%. Like I can count on, you know, one hand, how many times the light actually changed the color so drastically that it, that the room literally needed to be repainted. You know, it's, it's that you pick the wrong color. If the light changes the color in a way that you hate it, then it's, it means you pick the wrong color. The end. Here's a selfish question. White interiors. I know that you were talking about um, Nate Berkus and his white interior. Maybe it was the wrong tone, but are white interiors timeless? It's like, there's so, I mean, it's not, I mean, that's just, hmm, it's kind of a heavily loaded question because, you know, I actually have to say that I think that this new look with the the cognac sofa, you know, those two chairs that are with the wooden chair. I don't even know what those chairs are called, but you know, it's like those chairs that everybody, you know, you can get them for two ninety nine on Wayfair, right? <laughs> you know, but but that look with the black and white rug and like the natural, like the pampas grass and the baskets, and I'd have to say that look I think is easier to pull off than any other look and does have a fresher look to it. Now everyone's complaining, well, it's the same look over and over again, but everybody does decorate the same way with every trend, right? In the, you know, in the gray trend, everybody had, you know, everyone was doing gray from top to bottom. I mean, you know, and so what's great about the cognac black and white trend is that, you know, cognac is, is a, is a timeless leather sofa to begin with, you know, and so it just now warms up all the gray if you've, if you still got a lot of gray from the last 10 years of the gray trend. And, and so I think it's an easier look to pull off, but I think, you know, th- there's many shades of white. And so there's stark white, then there's the world of the palest of the grays, which are the grayages, And then there's the palest of the beiges, which are the complex creams. So if you put all those together and you choose the one that coordinates with your interior, then that can totally be timeless, you know, but after 10 years at the end of the day, you know, we all want a change. Like everybody not wants some kind of a refresh, right? So, you know, should you paint all your trim, some trendy, dark, dramatic color because you're adding warmth to your stark white house? I mean, now that might not seem so timeless anymore because it's actually very expensive to paint all the millwork all the trim, all the doors in your house, if you've painted them some like, I don't know, mid-tone gray or something because you want to add some warmth, right? So these are the, these are the places where, you know, if you're on a budget, I probably wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't splurge in the beginning to do that because now 10 years later, when you want to change, now you're stuck with this dark trim color, which everyone's stuck with right now from the brown trend. I mean, there's a lot of dark, really dark trim from that era that people have to work with, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we, my fiance and I, we bought our house last year in October, and they painted everything, every room in the house gray. <laughs> so we're wait, we're waiting to repaint it, but we're not in any particular hurry. Okay, so one thing we were talking about in the green room as well is I noticed you've been really on fire on your Instagram with your marketing, with your reels. So we're going to segue a little bit into your marketing and and how you're a powerhouse there. I I see them, I catch them all the time. And um, you're not all things to all people, right? We were discussing that and you use, you use this word. (laughs) You said you can be polarizing. And I see that as a positive thing, right? It's so positive because you're actually speaking to your target audience. You're speaking to your tribe. And I think a lot of us uh, designers in the audience are afraid to do that and afraid to repel anybody, but it's actually the ideal way to market, to get your super fans and your super clients. So tell me a little bit about the, how Reels has helped you out on Instagram and, and what your strategy is there. And then I have a follow-up. You know, it's interesting because I've been trying to crack the code on Instagram for so long and I've spent an extraordinary amount, way too much time trying to do it. I spend way too much time on that platform as it is. And, but you know, the reason why I do, and this might be a lot of other people's reasons as well, is that, you know, people really judge you 
as a marketer, as a, you know, designer, like, you know, as a business person based on your number of Instagram followers, like, I don't actually understand why, but that is just the way it is. Like I have this huge following on my blog. I have 400,000 monthly readers there. I got over, I got over a hundred thousand followers on Pinterest. Yeah. No one cares. No one cares. No, they all look at your Instagram number and then they're either impressed or not impressed based on your number of Instagram followers. So I've been working really, really, really hard. So one day, um, I was watching um, an influencer and they were doing this um, 10 ways to 10 ways to do something part one, part two. And I thought, oh, well, I can do that. And so then I did. Uh, so my first round was um, 10 ways. What was it 10 ways to not screw up your new build or something? <laughs> <laughs> it is 10 finishes that immediately date your new build. And the yeah. first one I talked about flooring. Right. Yeah. And gray flooring and how yep. like it should, should never have been invented. <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh, so my Instagram following went up a hundred thousand followers in like two and a half weeks. Yeah. And, and it's because you did, you said things like it should never have been invented and you're very, very Also, yeah, you know, some people might think, oh, well, I, I'm going to do that too. I'm going to do like a 10 part series. Right. And you totally should because Reels is Absolutely. I mean, Instagram's trying to be like TikTok now where it's video kids. Like if you're not giving us video, then we're not going to show your picture to anybody, right? Your pretty well-styled photo. Like, no, it's all about video. And so, um, so you should totally do that. But the reason why it worked for me is because my kind of no nonsense, this is how it is kids. Like that is my personality. And then, so it got to be fully expressed by doing these videos where before I, w I was doing the trends and I was, you know, trying all kinds of random this and random that. And, you know, really my blog that I've been writing for 14 years, it's almost 2000 posts on there. I mean, it's overwhelming to go there and try to get some advice. You don't know what order anything is in. You don't know if you're doing a new build and you've decided gray floors. I mean, they're totally timeless. They go with everything. It doesn't, it might not occur to you to search my blog for, you know, which is the most timeless flooring. What does Maria say about that? Well, you know, so you might not, you might completely miss that advice, right? So where you're watching my videos and they're like in an order. And I mean, everybody, everybody talks about video and how much faster people, you know, um, trust you from watching a video, right? And so my advice to anyone that's listening would be to start with your stories, right? Stories are 15 seconds, extremely low pressure, right? And you then start to learn how to be comfortable in front of the camera because my personality has always been like this where I'm like, do this, not that. And look, don't put in that 12 by 24 pedestrian tile. No, you're going to hate it. Like, you know, my personality has always been like that, but I didn't like, I wasn't, when I, when I, when I was first on video, I was extremely awkward and you know, like, cause you just, I don't know, you just are in the beginning. Right. And the sad thing about video is that you, it is impossible to go from not doing video to looking like a rock star on video. Like you actually have to go through all the learning and all the painful little, like there's no way to get better at video other than just doing it. A hundred percent. And so the reason why people, you know, resonate with my advice, I mean, so many people have been saying on these videos, you know, cause I've got this whole new audience before that I'm attracting, which is great. Cause I feel like I've had the same audience for a really, really long time on my blog. Um, you know, but everyone's hanging out on their phone now. Like I fall, I fell asleep at Top Gun a few weeks ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Right? Because when you're in a movie, you can't look at your phone at the same time if you're bored. Sad, but how, how don't we all like when we're watching TV, we're looking at our phone now? Like, that's just how it is. And so, like, <laughs> so everybody gets their information now from videos. So if you're not on video, like you're going to be behind. And so finally, I have all this, this, this new audience of people now, you know, sending me comments and they're saying things like, Oh, I was feeling so overwhelmed with my renovation or with my new build until I found your videos. And now they feel like there's something they can hang on to. 
They're like, okay, like I can do this instead of everyone else's advice that just, you know, like you hit other people's advice, for example, about, you know, what hard, hardwood flooring should you put in your house? And people are like, you know, you hit every single post will say things like, well, and if you want something modern, you know, then put in some gray flooring. No, no, because you'll notice that there is not a single high-end designer that uses gray flooring because that's how you know, like it never should have been invented. <laughs> they never jumped onto that trend. <laughs> right, a hundred percent. So what those reels suddenly had me do was to be myself. And I, cause that's always what anyone that is teaching you how to do video is teaching you to do is just to be yourself and the quickest way to get there is by doing stories and that's going to make you feel more comfortable. And then you're going to notice your personality come out on your stories. And then that's good. Stories are like a reels gateway drug, right? So that is something that we do here at Wingnut Social for our clients is we put together reels with the trending audio. I'm sure you know that that absolutely helps. And the reels are kicking ass for metrics for our clients. And so we're super excited about them when we've been singing that here for a while to, to do the reels. So I have one last question before we get into the wet up wingnut round. And that is what would you, what would your advice be to a designer who has a client come to them that says they want a trendy space? They want the gray floors. They want, you know, the, all the, tr all the trendy stuff, but the designer's like, eh. I would have a Pinterest board. I tell my students this all the time. Um, because they, they ask, they will say to me, well, Maria, like, what do I say to my client when I, when I tell them subway tile backsplash is what they, what they should have, they get this crestfallen look on their face. Like, really? So what you should do is have a Pinterest board just filled with everything super trendy, you know, and also so that they can see like what the result will be. But then also, I think that, I think that if you, you know, the more, the, the more you've been doing design, the bossier you get. Like any designer that's been doing it for 30 years, they're just as bossy as I am. They're like, nope, this is the floor you should have. Well, I mean, it's pretty hard, I would think, if you've got the answer, right? If you're like, here's the floor you should have and here's why. I mean, I don't get anyone now that argues with me. So if your client is arguing with you, it's just because you don't have the why. You need to be able to explain why your advice is the right advice. And that's what I teach in my two-day courses. Because so many, just, like you're in this business because you have a gift. You have a talent. but And you have good instincts and you have good taste. So that is what you are selling. That is what you are teaching and imparting upon your clients. But if you can't explain why your suggestion is the right suggestion, you might end up going down some complete tangent on, in, on that project that, right? You're, then you go, oh, yeah, I can't, I, can't photo, I can't put this on my portfolio because it's now gone off on some track that it wasn't supposed to go on because you didn't know how to explain why your advice was right. Even if you can put it on your portfolio in the moment, you might not want it there in three or four or five years. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> All right, Maria, thank you so much for your input. Now I have to ask you, are you ready for the What Up Wingnut round? Yes, I'm ready. Now it's time for What Up Wingnut. Wingnut. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? If you want to change the world, add color. Long but love it. You're stuck on a deserted island, but you can have your favorite food forever. What's it going to be? Avocado smash on my mom's sourdough bread. She makes the best avocado um, spread. So good. That sounds amazing. Lots of nutrients there too in the avocado. Very good. Uh, last but not least, please recommend a book that has impacted you either personally or professionally. Okay, I've just started reading this At Your Best by Carrie Newhoff. And uh, he talks about that you should do your most productive work when you are most productive. And so this actually, this book might have coincided at the same time with these reels because I used to wait to do video. Eh, let me get my emails done. Let me get all the work I have to do done first. Let me, you know, by two o'clock in the afternoon, you know, I've kind of run out of steam, right? And so... Like I'm a morning person. So when I'm at my most productive is first thing in the morning. And so now that's when I make sure that if I'm doing, I mean, now that I've cracked the code, I'm actually a lot more inspired as well. I mean, I've got, 
I'm so busy in my business that doing video, aimless video that didn't get me the results that I wanted or that I couldn't post because it was bad, that really drove me crazy because I don't have time to like, you know, fool around. You know, I need to be like getting this done. <laughs> so, so this book was really good for that because it teaches you how to be in your, like what to do while you're in your zone, you know, and then, then you can have more time because you've now done the most the things that you put off, the things that you think, oh, I got to get to that. Or yes, I'm working on that project, but oh, let me get to it after I've done all the things you normally do. Well, that's not your, that's not your zone. So yeah. So I recommend that book. That's At Your Best by Carrie Newhoff. All right. So Maria Killam, please tell the listeners where they can go to find out more about you, more about your, your products and your course, and we will call it a day. Awesome. Well, you can just go to mariakillam.com, K-I-L-L-A-M, and that is my site. And my most of my social media is also at Maria Killam, like on Instagram and TikTok like that. So yeah, please go there and come to, my, come to one of my two-day courses. All right, Maria, thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm glad we are, we are finally able to connect. You've been a wonderful guest and you have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much. Maria Killam is an interior designer who knows exactly who she is, <laughs> where she stands, and what you should damn be doing for your house. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I've been following her for years. And like I said, I used her color system for when I was doing interior design in Miami. It was incredibly helpful. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you at least get the color boards. If you don't do anything else, it just shaved down time, made way more efficient choices and uh, save money because you know, those mistakes can make when the, when it is the light, right? Quote, unquote. Um, like she said, it's never the light. It's always the undertones and how that hits. So very, very helpful. I highly recommend that. Um, but what really caught my recently for Maria is the marketing she's been doing with the reels on Instagram and the fact that she is, I mean, there's no real other way to put it. She's polarizing. She, she either love what she's saying or you're going to have an issue with what she's saying. And clearly it's working, right? She's not afraid to just winnow down, talk to her ideal client to say, gray floor should never have been freaking invented because they're the devil or what have you. She has really strong opinions and that that's important. And yeah, well, it pulled off some people. Sure. Of course it will, but it's going to attract way more. And those people that are, uh, she's attracting are digging what she's putting out. They love her for it. You know, she's entertaining. She's, she's very expressive and, and it's, and it's really working for her. And people love it. People, people do most of the time want the truth because it serves them, it helps them. And that at the end of the day is what she is doing. She is helping people save thousands of dollars, be happy with their designs over the long run. And uh, good for you. Good, good on you, Maria. And uh, again, reels, I, you've heard it here. I mean, we, we say this ad nauseum, but right now, reels are the thing to grow your audience on Instagram. You can't just put up anything. You have to, like our client, grow playrooms with Ann Gilliard, who's just recently on, who's grown from 4,000, 3,000 to, gosh, she's probably pushing 40,000 followers by now. I, I, you know, close to it. Uh, because we're putting the reels out. We're optimizing the reels, but she's doing the video, right? She's doing the, the, the face on it. So that's super important to do for your interior design business right now on Instagram. Because like Maria said, you know, she has 400,000 subscribers to her blog. That's, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's crazy good. But it is from an influencer standpoint or a marketing standpoint, it's still Instagram's just hard to beat. Okay, really hope you enjoyed this show. Please head on over to YouTube and uh, subscribe over there. That is uh, my new baby and I'm loving it. You can see all my little, my fiance likes to call them baby dolls <laughs> on the set behind me, all my little action figures that I like to collect. Don't judge. I'm being authentic. <laughs> Please leave us a review on whatever you listen to the show on. We really appreciate it. It helps people find us and helps them with their interior design business. And we love you for it. And until next week, remember to get out there, get uncomfortable and be great. Thank you, Stacey Martin. We love you too. So if you need help with having a plan, having a strategy to help your interior design business or your architecture firm be, uh, grow to be immensely powerful. <laughs>